In this video, I'm going to explain what is semaphore and how this semaphore is used for intertask communication in MUCOS 2. Semaphore provides a synchronization among the tasks and shared resources such as memory or input output devices. Semaphore is a non-negative integer variable. So in embedded C, we can simply write integer S. Semaphore value is shared among the tasks to solve critical section problem. The relationship between tasks, interrupt service routines, and a semaphore. Symbolically, semaphore is represented either a key or a flag as shown in the figure. If the semaphore is used to access the shared resources, it is shown as a key symbol. The capital N next to the key symbol represents how many resources are available. For binary semaphore, the value of N is 1. If the semaphore is used to signal the occurrence of an event, then it is represented with a flag symbol. The capital N beside the flag symbol tells us the number of times the event can be signaled. The R glass in the figure represents a timeout. MUCOS 2 provides 8 services to access semaphore. Those services are enlisted here. Out of these 8 services, we will mainly focus on 3 services, OSM create, creating a semaphore, OSM paint, waiting on a semaphore, and OSM post, signaling or releasing a semaphore. There are two types of semaphore, binary semaphore and the counting semaphore. If we use the semaphore to access a single shared resource, we need to initialize the semaphore to one. Shown in figure, if the semaphore value is one, it means the resource is available. And if the semaphore value is zero, the resource is not available. So in program, we can write same equals to OS same create and the value passed to this function is one. So this is how we can create the binary semaphore. Counting semaphore, if the semaphore allows your application to obtain any one of the n identical resources, initialize the semaphore to small n and use it as a counting semaphore. So in the given example, same equals to om same create 30. Here same is semaphore and 30 is the count that we have passed to the os same create function. So here we have created a counting semaphore. The semaphore is created by calling the OSM create function and a programmer can specify the initial count of the semaphore. In the example, the semaphore is declared as a pointer to the OS event data structure. And in the second line, we have created a binary semaphore by calling the function OSM create. Next, OSM paint waiting on a semaphore. Now call this function when a task needs to use a shared resource safely and is waiting for an event to synchronize its activities with an interrupt service routine or its task. When this function is called, the semaphore value gets decremented. This is a syntax for this OSM pend function. Three arguments are passed to this function. P event, which is a pointer for the data structure OS event. Then timeout is an integer and error. So here we have declared a semaphore as a pointer for the OS event data structure and in the example we have passed three arguments to the OSM pen function. The first argument is semaphore, second argument is timeout which is zero and the third argument is address of error. OSM post signaling or releasing a semaphore. This function will signal or release the semaphore so that the another task can obtain it. When this function is executed, semaphore value is incremented. This is a syntax for OSM post. An input argument passed to this function is pointer for the data structure OS event. So here we have written OSM post and the value passed is semaphore. Now let us see the embedded C program for binary semaphore by using the kill software. So in the project window, we have created three folder, app folder, mucos folder, and arm folder. The arm folder will take care of the arm hardware configuration files. Also, it includes library files and header files. App folder is our application. Now we are going to write a program for binary semaphore. So we'll go to the main.c file, open it. So this is a program for binary semaphore. Now let me explain you this program. In the beginning, we have included three header files, config.h, standard library.h, and serial.h. Then we have created the stack t1 and t2 having the size 100. These stack are declared as type OS SDK. We have declared a semaphore here as a pointer data structure OS event. 
after that this is task 1 and this is task 2 so in the task 1 we have called the function ossempend with three input arguments ossempend will acquire the semaphore after that it will print the value and after printing the value the semaphore will be released so that the another task can use it and os time delay hmsm so here the task 1 will be suspended for 100 milliseconds similarly in task 2 ossempend so this function will acquire the semaphore then print the b character then release the semaphore and task 2 will be suspended for 200 milliseconds inside main we have created the binary semaphore by passing the value 1 which means the shared resource is available so save this program translate build and rebuild go to the start and stop debug session okay go to the uart window select uart1 and now run the code so you can see here as per the program logic task 2 has the highest priority when the operating system starts the task 2 will be executed first and the character b will be printed on the uart so we have first character as output b after that the semaphore will be released and task 2 will be suspended for 200 milliseconds meanwhile the operating system executes the task 1 which is to print the character a and task 1 is suspended for 100 milliseconds so in the uart window you can see the first character output is capital b and after 100 millisecond character a again 100 millisecond character a two times a is printed after 200 millisecond the character b will be printed so this was all about binary semaphore thank you for watching this video